you need to quit thinking about yourself and think about the people on the other side of the phone, right? What do they want? What I've tried to think about and what has really worked, like the videos that did the very best where I got millions of views or whatever, those videos were always grounded in that little thought. You just have to think about what's going to get people to actually stop. You know, if they're scrolling along, what's going to get them to stop and actually watch the video. But then it became a business tool, which I don't think a lot of people expected it to be, but it just developed into that. And so you have to refine your page. And so that's why my page is now constantly the sketchbooks and the prints and showing you the process of what it is and romanticizing it a little bit visually in a way so that it becomes more appealing. So in terms of like uh, um, how you project yourself on social media and the website, um, I would recommend always look professional. Um, don't post anything too personal on your professional page. Um, people, you know, don't care maybe what you cook today, but maybe they do care what's in your studio. No? And the strategies that we employ have shifted over time. And keep, so keeping on top of them and, and figuring out what comprises a life in painting now, a, a self-sustaining life in painting, is where the wonderful things that Bold Brush releases into the world become so useful. Because they, they almost like they scoop up the desire that we all have, but rarely put into motion. You know, tips about how to improve your, you know, your social media following. I gotta tell you, it works. Welcome to The Bold Brush Show, where we believe that fortune favors the bold brush. My name is Laura Ringle Bear, and I'm your host. For those of you who are new to the podcast, we are a podcast that covers art marketing techniques and all sorts of business tips specifically to help artists learn to better sell their work. We interview artists at all stages of their careers, as well as others who are in careers tied to the art world in order to hear their advice and insights. For today's episode, we decided to compile the best social media tips from past episodes. The roadmap to growing your social media account is oftentimes complex and frankly confusing. Not every tip will work for everyone, but it's good to know what other successful artists have done so you can try it out for yourself and see what works for you. Like I mentioned on the previous episode, these aren't the only social media tips we discussed on the show, but they are some of the best ones to apply to your social media today. All of the artists mentioned in the episode are all linked in the show notes, as well as their respective episodes, so you may go listen to them if you'd like. And now, let's listen to the top 10 social media tips for artists. We're starting off with Nick Thurman, who tells us his golden nugget advice for what has worked for his social media platforms. Here's a little golden nugget, okay? This is my tip to everyone out there. If you have something that you really understand about your painting process, maybe you understand that makes your paintings unique or really elevates them to a higher level, you need to express that to your audience and to you know potential collectors. That's been something that has really set apart some of my paintings is just getting that opportunity to express to my collectors why these paintings are actually more valuable, you know, when it comes to the foundation, having good quality supplies, having a good oil ground, good quality linen, and being able to tell them why that's actually, you know, setting it apart and pushing it to that higher level where they can rely on the painting for the long term. So if you have anything like that, whether it's the philosophy, it's your process, it's the materials, anything that you can really tell them that's going to elevate that painting, you need to express that to them. And actually my biggest piece of advice, I think, would be to lose your ego. You need to quit thinking about yourself and think about the people on the other side of the phone, right? What do they want? What I've tried to think about and what has really worked, like the videos that did the very best where I got millions of views or whatever, those videos were always grounded in that little thought. It's very, it sounds very simple, but it's very difficult to execute. You just have to think about what's going to get people to actually stop. You know, if they're scrolling along, what's going to get them to stop and actually watch the video. And if they feel happy or they feel some sort of emotion afterwards, it generally, you know, I want to make people feel either happy or feel like they just learned something. That's kind of my goal. If you get them to feel something like that and they watch it all the way through, then you've done a great job. So you can imagine, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff out there. It's just not, it's not doing that job of getting people interested or getting people to actually watch because it's too much about what 
you have ideas about for yourself or, or something, something like that. So my advice is to lose your ego. Think about what's actually going to get somebody to stop and watch. Shana Levinson tells us how she uses social media to reach out, connect, and sell her work. I think I sell a majority of my work through social media. I would say 95% of my paintings I sell purely through Instagram. Um, and I think it it's all through reaching out to people, making sure that if someone's reached out to you about a painting that you are constantly like, hey, just seeing if you're still interested in this piece or, you know, re- if, and if someone's a collector already, typically a collector will become a, a repeat collector. Uh, with my repeat collectors, I always give a special discount to because, you know, we've created a relationship. Um but not being afraid to announce that your work is for sale, not posting. I know I have a lot of mentees, uh, students that I've mentored, and they've been so fearful of sharing their work on social media, but the only way for people to see it is by posting it. Mm-hmm. Um, also being active on social media, meaning don't just be a passive social media person by only posting your own stuff, going on, looking up art, commenting on people's art, going to gallery Instagram pages, commenting on their Instagram pages, being seen is important as an artist. It is not a passive career. Being an artist, we can't just sit back and wait for people to come and buy our work. We can't wait for a gallery to sell our work. We are our own gallery, whether we're represented by another gallery or not, or several galleries. We still are the first place that the art is made. So we're the ones that need to go out and reach out to those people. Every couple of months, I reach out to all of my collectors with the work that I've just created. And I say, hey, I have these new pieces. Let me know if you're interested. I also take payment plans from collectors. I want to make my work collectible, but I also want, I also know that my work is going up in value, which is exciting. And it mm-hmm. starts small. I remember in 2014, I sold a painting that was a 60 by 40 for $3,000. And now I sell a painting that size for $40,000. So. Wow knowing constantly putting the hours in knowing that the more hours you put in the better you'll get the more value your work will create and believing in your work i don't know i just i never sit back and wait i'm always the person that's very proactive because this is what our, my survival is is being an artist so you know it didn't start off that way it started off teaching mostly like teaching in my other studio and i was teaching little kids classes i was just trying to make little money here and there and then, uh, and it's been, uh, you know, a journey for sure. And it's always, I think that little bit of fear too, of thinking, oh my God, what if I don't make money next month? Makes me work that much harder. Makes me hustle that much more. Makes me reach out to people that much more. You know, you're just constantly thinking of ways to, to create interest in what you're creating. Luis Colan reminds us that steady growth and romanticizing your work can go a long way. Actually, it's uh, Instagram. Instagram has been somewhat of a of a blessing. I used to have a website, and and then also prior to Instagram, many years ago, blogging was a thing, and so I used to, you know, I got on that right away when when that became something that people were getting their voices, you know, heard um, out there, and you know, their art was being seen that way. So I didn't have much. I mean, I had some luck through blogging but not much and then someone a friend of mine said you need to get on instagram that's where that's where it's at that's where things are happening and i said oh god another thing for me to keep up with and and i was like oh i don't know uh and so i i got on instagram um i think it was 2013 um 12 and it was it was all new actually it's taken a while for me it took a while for me to figure out what it needed to be because a lot of times I would be posting personal things or things that were happening in the studio, things that were not studio related. And again, we didn't know it was Instagram. It's supposed to be what are, what's happening in your life at that very moment. But then it became a business tool, which I don't think a lot of people expected it to be, but it just developed into that. And so you have to refine your page. And so that's why my page is now constantly the sketchbooks and the prints and showing you the process of what it is and romanticizing it a little bit visually in a way so that it becomes more appealing so it's those are things that you learn as you as you go and like i said i get uh, a lot of messages from from different people around the world on instagram like 
how do I get these, you know, followers and how do I, and it's like, do you pay for them? I'm like, well, number one, I've been at it since 2013. It is now 2022. And it took quite a number of years for my account to reach 5,000. And then from there, it just kind of starts to, you know, snowball a little bit. So just like any, anything else, it's time and patience, just like my work. A lot of people like, oh, how do you do that? I'm like, it's time, patience, devotion. It's, it's all of those things. So Instagram has become a tool for me and that's why, and, and I have gotten, you know, sales through it. Thank God, luckily. Um, and so I keep using it. I keep exploiting it until the next thing comes because I, Instagram, I think might be coming to an end and, and uh, soon, I think I'm going to give it maybe another two years, but I think something else is coming up. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on on TikTok. Apparently a lot of artists are selling a lot of work through TikTok. I am not on TikTok. Um, I don't know how that works, but I do know that that there is a younger generation of, of artists who are now making bank on TikTok. Lisa Lebowski emphasizes the importance of being your authentic self. Well, yeah, so social media is great. I finally, and especially thanks to Bull Brush Alive, really learned how to how to use it as a as a marketing tool, but to uh, not spend so much time fussing over it and um, have fun with it because I, I it, well and, and utilize it to be able to better tell my story because you know again people like the vignettes they like to feel like they're a part of something so uh you know the, the, especially the way that um uh, a lot of these the, these platforms are, are um uh pushed right now it's you know they really want to see like okay there's your hand making the thing or whatever like they, they really want that inside look and I think I, I'm a little fortuitous because when I was younger, I think secretly I wanted to, uh, you're learning all these secrets about me. Secretly I'm shy and secretly I wanted to make music videos. So, <laughs> so the real thing is like, and TikTok and all this, and that's like, so I'm like, this, I'm like, oh, I can do the thing I always kind of wanted to do. <laughs> like, I love music and I, I'm, and I, you know, I, I like, I, I, I think I like to try to be funny. So, so I just, I have fun. Like I have my cat there and I'm like being a little goofy and I'm showing my painting technique and I got a good song on. So it's this really enjoyable thing that I devote just a little bit of time to. I won't let it take up too much of my day. Cause again, I'd rather be painting. Um, but, but that gives an insight and, you know, I've definitely had, especially this last year, a lot of people reach out to me. I can't say necessarily that this is, um, led to anything concrete but it, it it usually does like it always has when i first when i went nomadics i really utilized social media a lot to show the journey i was on and i got a lot of collectors through that process uh so i feel like this 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 is doing a bit of the same and and where people see my work at a show they then look me up and they're like oh you have this whole thing going on and it just you know it it, it makes it more intimate and, and something that they're a little bit more invested in Olia Babich and I discussed how growing your social media using FASO's art marketing calendar can be a game changer. It's always important to remember that growth is easier and more steady with incremental daily steps. It's really tough, like you said, to be an artist and not really have, like other businesses do, like a real marketing plan. You know, what am I supposed to do today? And then you can get mm -hmm. so confused because you're like, should I spend all day on social media or should I spend all day doing this? Oh, I don't want to do any of this. And then you yeah. end up just getting you know, an analysis paralysis and you're like, I'm just going to mm -hmm. hide in my studio and never post again. And then, of course, you make less sales because, well, you're not yeah. doing the stuff. Right. Exactly. Yes. So... This brings us to FASO's art marketing calendar. Do you mind telling us a little bit about what it is? Yeah, so FASO's art marketing calendar is a collaborative project, um, one that I've been able to kind of help um, create the infrastructure for and the design of like how it works based on what I've done for other businesses. So there, there are some things in marketing and executing certain things that overlap, um, you know, on the business side. However, there's some nuances to marketing artwork that are unique. And so, you know, with input from Bullbrush and Faso's marketing experts, and even Clint himself, the CEO and founder, and everybody else, you know, all the advice and all of the programs that Faso already has had, you know, they have a lot of great resources 
you know, to help their customers market their websites, um, basically taking all that information and putting it into a day-by-day -day calendar in a way that actually helps move the needle. So uh, for me personally, the challenge that I had was like, okay, so I'm going to post on social media. How is that going to help me sell my artwork? Nobody's going to my website. Like, how do you connect all of that together? And the art marketing calendar actually will kind of show you, well, if you do this, this is helping you build awareness. If you do this, this is helping you build relationships with your audience and you can now sell to your audience. If you do this, you're building relationships with your existing collectors and prior, you know, anybody that's bought art from you. So you as the artist not only get, you know, a it looks like an Excel spreadsheet because it's built in Google Docs, you know, a day by day box telling you what to do, but based on where you are in your journey, you know what you, you know, what you can focus on. So if you only have an hour a day to dedicate to these business tasks of selling art, and then you have to paint for the rest of the day, you can jump in there, get it done and jump out. And at least you know that the things that you're doing, you know what they're contributing to. And you don't have to think about it. You just do it, set a timer, get out and you're done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. And I, I think I've mentioned this before where sometimes you know, you can, you can follow certain steps. And like you said, if you don't know why you're doing them personally, mm -hmm. I, it, I don't, <laughs> I don't trust something when someone tells me, yeah, just do this. It's like, okay, but like, why, what's, what is coming yeah. out of this? What is the purpose of this? But thankfully, exactly. you know, like you said, it does have a purpose. And at first, even though you already know the purpose, it still kind of feels a little spooky because, mm -hmm. I've seen it happen with myself. You know, I've been following the calendar uh, not too faithfully the past two weeks though, because it's been a disaster. But um, <laughs> I started following it and I'm already seeing results from it. And it's literally, I only did maybe like three or four days of following the calendar. And that's awesome. Yeah, I went back up. Like I, I went up another, uh, I think a hundred followers within a week. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. Wow. Um, and then- Hopefully, once I start, you know, following more of the calendar, I will see even more effects. And that just goes to show how easy it is. You really, I think maybe I spent 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day yeah. just doing all of that. And bam, yeah. 100 new followers, more comments, more connections. And that's what this calendar is all about, right? So. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It makes me so happy to hear that because that is kind of what I've experienced. I mean, when I am actually following my own, you know, instructions, it works. I have seen it work. Um, and it's not anything, it's not like snake. It's not, this isn't something uh, like, you know, people say, oh, this is a secret. There really mm -hmm. is no secret. The secret is consistency and small yes. efforts, consistency and small efforts. And sometimes we spend too much time figuring out what to do and we waste, instead of just doing the thing that's going to help us right there, being on a schedule, being on a pattern, that's the secret. Mm -hmm. And, and not, and, you know, I've, I've worked on putting these things together for myself be, be, before. So this is where, you know, we took kind of like my format. I pulled these formats from, but, you know, my inspiration was other businesses. What do some of the best businesses in marketing do? And so anyway, it's, but the information is unique to artists. And like a really good example is we have one thing on there where we remind artists on a certain day every week to go in. And if anybody has uh, followed you recently, like on your social media platforms, any of them, send them a DM. Be like, hey, thank you so much for your support. I have, you know, welcome to my page. I would like to invite you to subscribe to my newsletter and you give them the link. Cause this is the best opportunity to do that. And like, that wasn't, you know, it's not something we always think about and we get so busy, we forget, but that little prompt, that reminder, spend 10 minutes today doing that, bam. And you can already grow your newsletter. Cause even if out of the 10 messages that you send, five of them sign up, there you go. You got five new subscribers. So yeah. stuff like that. At Bold Brush, we inspire artists to inspire the world because creating art creates magic. And the world is currently in desperate need of magic. Bold Brush provides artists with free art marketing, creativity, and business ideas and information. 
This show is an example. We also offer written resources, articles, and a free monthly art contest open to all visual artists. We believe that fortune favors the bold brush. And if you believe that too, sign up completely free at boldbrushshow.com. That's B-O-L-D-B-R-U-S-H show.com. The Bold Brush Show is sponsored by Basso. Now more than ever, it's crucial to have a website when you're an artist, especially if you want to be a professional in your career. Thankfully, with our special link, faso.com forward slash podcast, you can make that come true and also get over 50% off your first year on your artist website. Yes, that's basically the price of 12 lattes in one year, which I think is a really great deal considering that you get sleek and beautiful website templates that are also mobile friendly, e-commerce, print on demand in certain countries, as well as access to our marketing center that has our brand new art marketing calendar. And the art marketing calendar is something that you won't get with our competitor. The art marketing calendar gives you day-by-day, step-by-step guides on what you should be doing today, right now, in order to get your artwork out there and seen by the right eyes so that you can make more sales this year. So if you want to change your life and actually meet your sales goal this year, then start now by going to our special link, faso.com forward slash podcast. That's F-A-S-O dot com forward slash podcast. Jessica Oliveras reminds us of the importance of keeping your business page professional and filled with the best work you can possibly make. Before jumping into into marketing, I would like to say that building up a strong portfolio is very important. Sometimes we want to rush uh, into something. We might see other artists very successful on Instagram or, or we know clearly where we want to arrive, but we are failing the basics, which is uh, make sure your technique um, uh, is, is good, um, that you like the way you are, your art is, is going to, the direction that you are getting to, um, you, you know the style you want to um, develop or explore more. So the, the majority of the time should be spent in the studio. This is the first step. And if, um, if for any aspiring artist, they feel like um, they want to go very fast and they want to jump on the internet and Instagram and, and go big very fast, I would recommend like sometimes it's best to get like a part-time job for a while Make sure that you have time to develop your art in your studio in a very protected space, experiment, ruin things until you find your way. And then when you're ready, you say, okay, this works, I'm proud of. Of course, they always can be better because we're always learning until the very end. Uh, perfection does not exist. So, you know, I'm not saying into until it's perfect, but at least until you are convinced that it's a good piece. And then you can focus on the rest marketing yourself, doing a good website. Um, and myself, I really found it very much easier to rely on the services of companies and organizations that they already established. So for example, Anso or Bold Brush has really, really helped me on that. Um, because I, I had a website before, but um, they were, it was not a, a platform that was meant for artists only. So with my no knowledge on technical stuff, as you could see before of me trying to join on, on, on the on the podcast. Um, <laughs> I had to, you know, really like trying to investigate and, and, and try my best to do a decent website. But we have so many services that they are all set up for us, ready to go. It's so much easier when you have these platforms and you make use of them. So this has really helped me to at least have first of all the website with so, so i could do my newsletter all my subscribers everything is organized everything is is controlled and then um you can start things um from um from order from from things that can give you a result a product instead of trying something really chaotic which doesn't bring you anywhere um, and then, uh, yes, as well, like, uh, um, marketing my, my art on Instagram, um, the way that Bold Brush, uh, gives tips and helps artists to do the video editing and the photo shoots of the work has really, really helped me with the engagement of my page and the followers, which is, um, always very, very important 
to to have a good presence on Instagram and then convert these uh, followers into into uh, art enthusiasts and collectors and buyers um, and even uh, students. Um, so in terms of like uh, um, how you project yourself on social media on the website, um, I would recommend always look professional. Um, don't post anything too personal on your professional page. Um, people, you know, don't care maybe what you cook today, but maybe they do care what's in your studio. No? So um, um, try always to be respectful. Um, never play like the the rock star and don't answer people. I mean, you know, people they like your work. They they love it. They spend time commenting on it. They spend time messaging you so answer the dms answer them the comments be grateful be generous so if they ask you questions um share with them you know um i think this is very important um we in in every stage all artists we've been you know let's say um in general it's like we did not we didn't know the information it was not maybe uh, available to us when we were starting and now that social media is such a big thing and we have so many platforms it's it's good to guide people into them and say okay maybe you can try these why don't you try that without any economical purpose just for helping each other um uh, so yes and then uh make use of your newsletter and try to engage into more private and personal conversations to people they are really engaged with what you do um, so I think that really works as well um, and eventually if you are interested as well in art galleries and stuff um, they will find you anyways if you have a good portfolio and you have a strong presence on, on Instagram and a, a, a well-designed website the photos they look nice good lightning good quality you know it's just um, it's a journey so everything will come up everything you know will work out but we have to work step by step and this is the advice that we give to anybody who is listening to not to try to rush into you know becoming this like superstar artist but do things properly from the beginning and try to bring things slowly but steady kelly eden emphasizes the importance of being a kind and genuine person as well as don't be afraid to reach out to the people who inspire you always film yourself painting. Even if you're a slow painter, record maybe three minutes of painting action every hour. So you have tons to work with in the future. There's so much you can do with it. Even if it's just a fun clip of a little fun trick or technique. For example, you might've seen this 20 second clip going around from Christiane Vlugels, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, where she takes a strand of her hair and she slides it across the paint that's on her palette knife. And then she lightly touches it to her painting where she has this unbelievable rendering of hyper-realistic hair. So that little clip, that 20 second clip has over a thousand comments and 200,000 views. So if you have a little trick like that, film it and post it. You, you never know what type of exposure you're going to get from that. And the reality is TikTok and Reels are the present and they are the future. It's an excellent way to get seen. And honestly, there are very, very simple ways to make a reel without ever appearing on camera if you're camera shy, you know, and you don't necessarily want to have like 40, 70 plus hours of footage, you know, you, you want to make sure you're not overwhelming yourself. But if you do, you can always use that footage for pre-recorded workshops, which is a great way to make passive income. And honestly, I prefer pre-recorded workshops as opposed to Zoom because with Zoom, Zoom is great for workshops, but you're never going to see the painting demo in high res which can make it really hard to get a real sense of, of the technique that's being taught. It, I think it's important to make sure you are on every single social media platform. Even if you're not the type to keep up with social media, at the very least, you should register and reserve your name, especially if it's a new app that came out. Even if you think you're never going to use it, reserve your name. Fill out the profile details, including, you know, profile pic, bio, link to your website, all the content that you film is recyclable, so you could and should use it everywhere you can. There's an editing app that I'd like to recommend. It's called InShot. InShot. It's a video editing app that allows you to basically do anything that iMovie can do and more. And you can edit, you know, vertical videos. So there's not 
that many apps that allow you to do that. So vertical video, that's what you should be filming in going forward because, you know, everything that we're seeing now is like, that is the direction that all the main platforms are going is vertical. And it's just, it's really easy to use once you get the hang of it. Oh, let's see. Okay. The other tip I have, TikTok and Reels, this can scare a lot of people for various reasons. People are really afraid to put themselves out there and keep up with Gen Z. But here's the thing. You just need to come as yourself. You're an artist. You, you know, you have actual talent to show. You have substance. You have a reason to be there. So don't follow trends. You don't need to dance on camera or share story times. Just keep it short, keep it simple, show a technique, show the first couple brush strokes, and then the final brush strokes of a painting. Basically, you just need to use it to be able to show off what you can do. So, you know, you don't need to go viral for this to be helpful. Going viral is great, but it's fleeting and it's really easy to end up, you know, always comparing yourself to that standard. And it's like a distraction. You just have to be very careful to not let that redefine what success looks like for you. So if you get more comfortable with that, I would invite you to get a little bit more personal. Now, this is a double-edged sword, so you need to tread carefully. Sometimes sharing a personal story behind a painting may create a love mark in someone who identifies with the story. On the other hand, there are unfortunately some very sick people on the internet and you should never underestimate that even if you have a very very small following i found that making friends with other artists has been profoundly helpful in so many ways make sure on social media you're following as many artists in your genre as possible engage with them, leave them nice comments, a critique, hype them up uh, in a way that you feel is genuine. Take one of their workshops if it strikes you. You really have nothing to lose and everything to gain. This is also about the algorithm. So the more you engage with other artists that have similar work to you, if someone follows that artist, you're more likely to come up in the suggested people to follow right after. Mark Thompson tells us how, through being consistent, your page can suddenly grow. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, social media, we've had to learn how to film ourselves whilst attempting to be unselfconscious and yet retain a kind of honesty and integrity with the work. I mean, I certainly never expected to become an amateur filmmaker, <laughs> you know, but having said that, it's still capable of a, a true connected social media, you know, the, the actual social part of it rather than the, the, the rapid skim past. I think is invaluable i mean let's face it it is ultimately a free advertisement that that yes is can be very difficult to spot in amongst billions of people but it is still capable of providing extraordinary opportunities i think the business aspects of a career in painting are the the mechanics and the framework through which to push the object or the thing that you make out into the world and the strategies that we employ have shifted over time and keep so keeping on top of them and, and figuring out what comprises a life in painting now of a self-sustaining life in painting is where the wonderful things that bold brush releases into the world and become so useful because they they almost like they scoop up the desire that we all have but rarely put into motion you know tips about how to improve your you know your social media following i gotta tell you it works you know last I spoke i think i had about four thousand followers you know we talked a little bit earlier about becoming a video editor whether we liked it or not and i got on the reels program you know geez it takes me yeah it, it was a little bit strange to perpetually be filming the process but piecing it to, uh, together at the end of the day for a couple of minutes and putting out a 30 second video into the world that just w was like a diary of the day actually became kind of a pleasure and um, one day I, I put one out into the world and it had a springboard effect you know my my usual kind of numbers of uh, views for a reel were I don't know 1,000 2,000 4,000 if I was lucky and this thing took off and I think now it's had eight hundred and something thousand views which for me 
everything was bananas. I thought, well, this is exactly the same as all the other ones I've done. But timing, pacing, just the thing happened at a moment and off it went. And the process becomes exponential. So those very useful conversations and, you know, articles that, that Bold Brush create do have tangible real world benefits, which surprises me more than anybody else after being such a such a moaner about you know about having to deal with social media. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's had an actual effect, you know, the most interesting one. And I'm not sure whether the, the two things are exactly related, but they're certainly adjacent. But yeah, recently I was contacted out of the blue by a gallery in New York who occasionally pull artists into quite interesting group shows. Uh, they're called the Vat of Plus Gallery um, on Wall Street. And they asked me to submit some work to their their next group show. And it was accepted. So October 28th, um, I have a painting that actually, weirdly, was the subject of that explosive post will be on show in New York. Yeah, it was purely an Instagram thing. If it hadn't been on Instagram, it wouldn't have been seen. Derek Harrison explains how social media is useful to allow people to find you and to connect with collectors. It's just, it's, you know, if you handle it responsibly, it can be an amazing thing. I have connected with many collectors through Instagram. I started to do, I do a studio sale once a year now that's only on Instagram that does, you know, great. Um, there have been, I, I, it's hard to keep track. Like there have been so many shows where it's been with a gallery, but the per, the collector who bought the painting found it through my own Instagram account. So I remember at first it was like, you know, are these collectors? Because, you know, a lot of them are a little bit older, so they're not going to be like super social media savvy. But lo and behold, I found a lot of them were creating Instagram accounts uh, just for that reason, you know, to follow artists whose work they liked. And so they started to reach out. And yeah, I, I communicate with them all the time, you know. Uh, maybe every week somebody messages about some painting, you know, where it's going, how much it is, whatever it may be. So it's really nice to have that um, that connection and have it be so easy, so direct. Um, I sell s through Instagram a little bit. I still, like, I got to tell you, like, I kind of prefer the gallery world for that. You know, I just love to be in the studio painting. I don't really want to worry about much else if I can help it. So every once in a while, I'll do the Instagram selling thing. But most of the time, I, I do prefer if I can just paint and then and then send it out, you know, and have uh, the gallery handle that. But, and then, but marketing and all that kind of stuff, connecting with other artists, it's really helpful. Um, when, you know, Instagram, I can just link it right up to my website. So a lot of people will maybe find me on Instagram and then go to my website and they wouldn't have found my website otherwise. So that's pretty helpful. Finally, Catherine Bobkowski reminds us that social media is a two-way street, and she also reminds us of the power of gratitude. This has been on my mind a lot lately. Um, I, I think back in September of last year, I had uh, maybe almost 10,000 followers on Instagram, and now I have, I think, uh, I haven't really checked today, but I think as of today, I have somewhere around 55,000, and um, uh, which... I, I think in my mind, I thought when I get to a certain number of followers, life will be completely different. I'll be set. Um, <laughs> you're laughing. If only. If only. I know, right? It took me a while to connect the dots on that, that that's not how it works. <laughs> um, which uh, probably your audience is already so knowledgeable about this already. They're probably thinking like, duh. <laughs> but it was not obvious to me. Um, mm -hmm that social media is like an aspect of marketing. It's maybe a, a part or a first step, but it's not the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. And the thing really that I've been realizing lately, especially is that uh, Instagram doesn't care if Catherine Bobkowski grows and has a successful business. Uh, they care about Instagram growing and having a successful business. And actually helping me out might be you know, counterproductive to that goal, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the, the thing I've been realizing is that, and I think what people want too, is an actual human connection, like actual interaction, conversation, a, a personal connection that is not what you get from watching a 20 second reel on Instagram. Although 
I will continue to make 20 second reels and I'm very grateful for all the people that enjoy them. Thank you. But, <laughs> but there's more, there's more than just that. Um, and uh, I mean, so I think it, it, you know, take that opportunity, whatever opportunity you have to make that connection on Instagram and get those folks that really love you off of the platform, get them to subscribe to your newsletter, let them know about your classes and workshops, um, let them know about who you are as a, as a, person. I mean, I listen, I, I respond to every comment that I get on any of my posts. Wow. And if someone leaves me a nice and especially nice comment, I will thank them individually. And if someone leaves me a comment asking something about painting technique or asking something about, um, or even just saying something about art in general, like I will answer their question, I will engage in that conversation um always because to me that's like the whole point of this thing <laughs> it's social media yes. it's not just there for <laughs> me to like collect compliments and likes and follows and stuff like oh yes this is great no <laughs> we're supposed to make some kind of a social connection with people and i would advise anybody out there who's trying to like figure out how to use social media for their marketing or for their business like try to make it personal and if someone leaves you a nice comment, or if, if you notice that, um, you know, someone has, has followed you, maybe someone who's not in your circle of people that you're already familiar with, or, or someone who's um, uh, maybe an artist that you like, or maybe a, a account that's bigger than yours or whatever, like send them a message, <laughs> DM them and say, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I love your work. Wow. Um, uh, if people are asking you questions because they want to know about you or about your work, like engage in that um check your message requests <laughs> quite frankly so many things get just kind of lost in the shuffle uh oh i'm speaking more truth i see <laughs> we here at bold brush want to give a huge thank you to all of our fantastic guests for the wonderful advice that they've shared with us we hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did it would help us a lot if you could leave us a review on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you get your podcasts and also remember to follow our instagram and subscribe to our youtube channel at Bullbrush, where we have begun posting the video episodes of the podcast. If you want to see the video episodes before everyone else, however, and also get the best marketing advice out there, simply go to boldbrushshow.com. That's B-O-L-D-B-R-U-S-H show.com. And of course, you can find all of the links in the show notes.